Welcome back. Uh, another day. The weather this week has been absolutely appalling, so I've had an opportunity. Well, I haven't had an opportunity to do anything. Um, it's either been pissing wet or just thoroughly unpleasant. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is try and swap these track rod ends. So I'm going to clean up the threads. I also need to check whether I've got spanners that size because I can't honestly remember now. There's no actual play in them, but um, I don't. You, you can swap just the boots, but for a tenner a side, it's easier just to swap the whole thing. This is a job. It's dead simple, but sometimes can be a complete ass. However. We have got lucky on this. It looks like whoever last put this car together used a lot of copper slip. So the lock nut there came off undone really easy. The nut for the actual rod end came off really easily and you can see all the copper slip on there. So ordinarily I'd use my grindy my clampy tool to split it but actually I might just give that a tap with a hammer and it might release so I'll go and find a big hammer. Gave it a few sharp blows but it didn't want to die so I've taken the detective cap and off the washer. That is a nice little touch incidentally from Rover. It just protects the rubber boot from the heat given off by the disc. Um, I haven't seen many cars with that. Maybe it's a 70s, 80s thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's windy today. There we go. Right, so that's off. And I've wound the lock nut back up onto this so I can. I don't have to count the turns. I can just. Um, actually, what will I do? Yeah, counting the turns only works if you're replacing the same one. What I'm going to do is because the other one is going to be a slightly different design, probably. I'll. Uh, actually measure the distance between the lock nut and the centre of that joint and then I should be the right length and won't need the tracking done again. Here is the new one. You can see the difference in length. This one is about, I don't know, four or five mil shorter. So I'm just going to measure from the lock nut to the centre of that. That's about 80 mil. about right. It doesn't have to be mega perfect because it can all be retracked anyway but that will get us started. be nice if I didn't have to but with brand new tyres you'll soon see and you'll soon feel whether it's neat or not. Cool right that can all go back together. I'll probably need two hands for this. One side done all back together lock knot nipped up so we'll wait and see when it's back on the ground how that looks. That side's done now to the other rod end, which was fitted to the car. It was actually a different length again, so um, when you're, if you're doing like a measurement, don't assume both sides are the same, because cars this age have had a lot of different parts fitted over the years, and there's no guarantee that what was work, working on one side is different on the other. So. Oh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, the reason I'm talking quickly is because it's about to crap out and rain again. So what I'm doing is just trying to get as much done as I can when the weather allows, as per usual. I've been all the way through the front suspension and I think I might have mentioned in another video, it's obviously been modified at the front. Anti-roll bar bushes are good. Where it goes into the lower control arm, that's already been fitted with polyurethane bushes. These ones inboard here, they're um, I think
think you call them a metalastic bush so it's the cast or the forged steel arm drop forged then inside there the bushing has a steel outer then the rubber and then a steel inner and they're actually quite good quite tough resilient and they don't really cause a lot of problems the strut and the spring cover and the spring they all look new it's even got the insulator in it it's just happened to have got a bit of green overspray on it damper no signs of wetness or leaking um, so that's all good the only thing to do with the front suspension and steering which is not good and this is quite common on sd ones and i think it often leads people to think that they're not very nice handling cars or that the build quality ain't great up in here if i get that stereo out there there's a metal plate the steering column goes through it there should be a bush in there and it has basically disappeared into the ether but that's not a problem because rover st ones are so great and they're used so much in motorsport you can buy the polyurethane superflex version of the original bushing same dimensions but rather than being made of a nylon or um, a hard rigid plastic it's actually this one new one poly and um, has a bit of give in it they're really good i fitted these on one of my cars a long time ago and i was really impressed so that will go in i can't remember which way round it goes whether it goes from the inside out or from the outside in um, i might have to go and look at my workshop manual and have a think about that either way to get this on you have to split the column from the rack <coughs> split the column from in the car slide it forward fanny around put this on put it all back together again so it's not a lot of fun but um needs doing and it needs doing fast before it rains here we are under the car that's the other bit that quite often can fail um it's the rubber gaibo it just damps out any sort of steering vibration uh because the the rack is rigidly mounted to the subframe so no compliance there so the driver would get a lot of shock up through the hands so they fit this rubber gaibo i would quite like to just remove it and put a disc of steel in there because it will just you know tighten everything up a bit but anyway uh that's the only other bit that i needed to inspect and it's good there's no splits or tears in it so i'm happy with that i'm now going to go and remind myself whether i need to undo the column from under the car or whether i just need to do it from inside the car uh, so i'll go and do some head scratching now that was a struggle um i haven't, haven't got any further than just getting access really the uh column terminates in that uj there at that spline clamp same again to the bottom of the column there at that one what i need to do is split that from that and in order to do that i've loosened that so that the whole uj can slide forward the access into that area is appalling and then when it comes to trying to take that plate off the bulkhead obviously they're just nuts and bolts so you need something to hold the bolt on one side and something to hold the nut on the other ideally you'd have a glamorous assistant but i don't have that with me today so i am just well, well in the end i had to resort to clipping mole grips on the back side of this and then working from the engine bay side which was a complete bitch but anyway now i can get some wd 40 on that and drive the spline off and then hopefully start putting it back together again i've done this job a couple of times but and I, I remembered it not being too bad but that of course was because i was working on cars that were stripped heavily whereas this is pretty much still you know apart from the carpet and the glove box and that a complete car so lesson learned don't forget that this job is a bitch all right i need to go and get a long pokey stick and then hammer that Huh. some chisel action later the chisel is actually wedged through the open side of the, the clamp so it's holding the spine open that's all been driven forward and now i can get my fingers over the end of that um i'm trying to remind myself whether i actually need to remove the column entirely i don't think you do i think there's enough room to just slide the plate forward and off um so yeah i'll do that now okay i'd 
slightly forgotten that actually the the not only the outer column but the inner column is telescopic so i just pushed that up and in and that gave me loads of room to get the plate off i've put the um washer or sorry the seal in that way around that'll go on the bulkhead like that and i've just got to put some of its special sauce i don't know why the hell you need this but there you go um and then i'll have the fun and games of trying to put it all back together again this might be that i won't get very far bolting the plate in because i just cannot reach and hold two sides of the thing at the same time to get the bolts in um i might be able to devise a cunning plan or i might just have to wait until i'm yeah we should persevere it hasn't started raining yet either which is a good thing but um it's not not hopeful i haven't even had a cup of tea yet this morning it's about 10 o'clock i think uh yeah i'm winning slowly uh, access is a pain it involves cutting my arms on bits of metal uh the plate is in the bolts are through the splines are lined up but not pushed home i'm trying to get a spanner to balance on the plain nut and lock washer this side will i do it up this side but it's infuriating because it just wants to drop off every time as soon as the lock not sorry lock washer oh cock it's gone again i think as soon as the spring washer makes contact between the bulkhead and the underside of the nut we should be onto a winner and i should be able to wedge the spanner in or use mole grips this side or you know get get it done up tight is that working i believe we are somewhere oh yeah great that's on there can i do it up come on oh you stupid bastard thing Oh yeah, hold on, let's put the camera down. Right. That's one done. That reassuring clunk noise was my knowledge that it's tight. Oh fuck yeah, that's tight. Yippee! Right, number two. Uh, this one I've already got started. Just need to play the same trick this i've got a lot better access this side so i might just put the mole grips on the head of that bolt this side and then work from the engine bay side to do it up why is that not going through through now you bitch Anyway, more of the same. Oh, that's both sides done up now, using the same trick. Now, the column, it can move up and down, but it cannot wiggle around left and right. So that is a major result. I just need to move the UJ up onto here, up onto the column, put the clamp bolts back through. And again, I'm gonna try and do it myself, but whether I'll be able to, I don't know. Um, sort of wiggling it's, sort of, it's going as I wiggle it the spline has an indent in it for the passage of the clamp bolts so I can tell when I'm there this one not so much that one it has like a circumferential groove through the uh, what would they be axial uh, flutings for the spline this one just has a chamfer all the way along so it's not so critical but yeah i need to drive this up and into the car until the um the passageway through the clamp aligns with the groove around the spine i hope that all makes sense the only problem is every time you hit the column it will want to slide up and in the car so i really need something to hold the column down while i drive the spine on so i'll go and have a think about how the hell I'm gonna do that? I don't quite know how I've managed to do this, but I have pretty much finished. 
We've got one, that one's in, all done up on the bulkhead. We've just got one bolt to go through there now, but access is easy. So it shouldn't be too difficult. And I'm in fact gonna do it from underneath possibly. But yeah, I'm really pleased with myself. Feeling rather smug because um, it hasn't rained yet. And that was a complete bitch of a job to do single-handed by yourself on a fully assembled car. So yeah, one bolt to do, and then I'm gonna go in for tea and medals. Packed up my tools and it just started pissing down. One thing I forgot to do is close up the garages, but yeah, rain has stopped to play once again.